Hi, I'm here to talk about my new free Blender add-on that automates space switching. I won't be going into too much detail here about space switching itself, because this is the topic of Richard Lico's course and he can explain it much better than me. I'll link his course in the video description. Another great resource for space switching is Pierre Picot's videos. He demonstrates some uses of space switching and how to do it in Blender, so I'll also link his videos in the description. What I will talk about in this video is this add-on that I made that makes space switching quick and easy in Blender, so I'll explain how to use it and show some quick practical uses for space switching. Okay, so this is the space switching add-on interface. You can find it in the Blender viewport side menu. And I'll be going button by button uh, what it does and how to use it. And I'll show some examples using this rig. The first button here is a bake action shortcut. And this is just to make things quicker. This is the same as doing uh, a bake action with visual king, clear constraints and override current action. And I use this for uh, baking action on bones and objects, so I just hit the button and the action is baked. The first proper space switching function is the word space conversion, and it's this button here. So um, I'll demonstrate what it does using this rig. I have a very simple jumping animation where uh, there are keyframes on just the cog and the feet. So this chest bone has no keyframes on it, but it moves through space because it inherits the motion of the cog. That means that I can access this animation data on the chest. But by doing a word space conversion, now the movement of the chest through space is put in this empty. And it's doing exactly the same movement as the chest was doing before. But now this empty is the controller of the chest bone. One use for this kind of space switching is that I can delay the animation of the empty. I'm moving the empty's animation, not the rig's animation. And by doing this, now the chest has some overlap in action. The important thing to remember is that this action is on the empty and not the rig. So if I delete this empty, the animation is back to normal. So if I want to keep this uh, nice overlap in action, I have to take the rig, select the chest bone, and bake this action. Now it has keyframes where the overlap motion is applied in local space. And now I can delete the empty and the overlap motion is preserved. The same logic that we use for location data can also be used for rotation data. So now if I select the empty and do a word space conversion for rotation, the empty just copies the rotation of the chest. And I can do the same trick. This here is just location and rotation at the same time. This slider here is just for the size of the empties that are created. So if they are too big or too small for your project, you can tweak it. So let me just do a conversion here and now the empty is big. The next conversion we can do is to aim space. And what this does is to convert the rotation motion of a bone to translation motion of an empty. To use M space conversion, we have first to choose the main rotation axis of the bone we are going to convert. For bones in Blender, it's usually the positive Y axis, but I know for this cog bone, it's best to use the positive Z axis. So I'll just choose the axis and then hit aim space. Now I have this empty that when it moves through space, the cog rotates to point at this empty. The overall motion hasn't changed yet. But now I can see in the location data of this empty, the rotation of the cog. This can be really useful to see noise in the rotation of the cog. So I can see here this y-axis of the position of the empty is the main rotation of the cog forwards and backwards. And I can see here that I have this weird, weird bump in my curve that I can then change. So by just deleting those noisy keyframes, I can have the rotation motion be much cleaner. By checking this box here, we can do an aim space conversion and a an word space conversion at the same time. I'll do it on the head here. So now I have this empty that controls where the head is pointing. 
and this empty that controls where it is in space. What I can do with this empty here for the pointing of the head is that instead of moving up and down with the jump, I can delete the motion after the first frame and now my character will look at this point in space. And I can move it a bit forwards so it's not as intense. And we can also do the same trick as before of the overlapping action by taking this empty and delay its action by one frame. So now we create an overlapping motion of the head while it's looking at a point in space. This next button here, aim space for chain of bones, can be very very useful when you have an FK chain of bones, like in a tail or cloth or in the torso of the character and you want to create overlap in action. So I have created a simple tail motion, just moving the base of the tail. And now I will select all the bones of the tail and hit aim space for chain of bones with the Y axis selected. This creates an empty for each segment of the tail. And I can use the same delay trick that we use for the overlapping motion of the other uh, parts of the body for this tail. So I'll take each empty, uh, delay it by one frame, and then deselect the previous and then do the same forwards. And now we have an overlapping motion just like that. This next tool here is a physics simulation tool for bones or empties. So I'm back at jump animation and I'll do a physics simulation on this chest bone so you can see what it does. Now this chest has this overlapping motion and this strength factor controls how closely the chest moves relative to its previous motion and the dampening factor control how much it overlaps before it settles in its final position. So by changing the values to 400 strength and 0 0.9 dampening, I can create an overlap motion for the chest. The same physics simulation can also be applied to empties instead of bones. In this case, instead of doing the simulation on the location of the bone, will be affecting the rotation of the bone. So I'll be converting this cog to aim space. And now I'll do the physics simulation on the empty. So we have now overlap motion on the rotation of the cog. This can be very useful for doing physics simulation on ears, for example. So I'll put this ear in aim space and I'll do the physics simulation on the empty and now I have a bouncy here. I hope you enjoyed this video and make good use of this add-on. It's still in very early development so if you encounter any bugs please uh, send me a message and I'll try to fix them. And if you have any more doubts about the space switching, please refer to the links in the description for PIC videos and Richard Lico's course. And that's it. Thank you.